Welcome to AC 24-7, I'm Aaron Dean. The Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation may be in serious financial trouble. According to tax documents filed with the New Mexico Attorney General's Office, the nonprofit reported $8.5 million in revenue last year, while spending more than $17 million. That's a $9 million deficit. The nonprofit ended the year with $30 million in assets, which is a third of the 90 million raised following the death of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor in 2020. In 2021, the co-founder Patrice Cullors resigned amid a series of financial controversies involving donations, property purchases, and the salaries of relatives on staff. This week marks three years since George Floyd's death, the May 25th, 2020 killing of the 46-year-old by Minneapolis police officers sparked protests throughout the country. The incident was caught on camera as a crowd of bystanders shouted at officers to stop. President Biden released a statement this week saying it exposed for many what black and brown communities have long known and experienced. He also called on Congress to take up police reform. All four of the officers who took part in the fatal restraint of Floyd have been convicted on both state and federal charges. Well, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis took to Twitter this week to officially announce his 2024 presidential run. But the live stream event with Elon Musk did not go according to plan. The Advocate Channel's Jessica Dean reports. Do you go with the crowd? Or do you look at the data yourself and cut against the grain? And I chose to do the latter. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' attempt to declare his candidacy for president in a unique way, with Twitter owner Elon Musk on Twitter Spaces, an audio-only platform, plagued by technical issues at the start. So they just keep crashing, huh? Yeah, I think we've got <laughs> a, just a massive number of people online, so it's um, servers are straining somewhat. But server issues caused the rollout to be plagued with problems, with Team DeSantis tweeting, quote, it seems we broke the internet with so much excitement. While you're waiting, donate now. We must look forward, not backwards. We need the courage to lead, and we must have the strength to win. DeSantis also asked about the NAACP issuing a travel advisory against his state, claiming Florida is not safe for minorities to visit. Claiming that Florida is unsafe is a total farce. I mean, are you kidding me? Wednesday's Twitter event, the latest move in DeSantis's presidential campaign rollout. He filed paperwork earlier Wednesday with the Federal Election Commission. On Tuesday, DeSantis's wife, Casey, tweeted a hype video encouraging supporters to sign up for campaign updates. America has been worth it every single time. DeSantis jumps in the Republican primary following months of speculation about the Florida governor's political future, fueled by a national book tour and visits to key early nominating states. I have only begun to fight. As the Republican primary fight intensifies, a new CNN poll shows former President Donald Trump leading the GOP field with roughly double the support of DeSantis and no other candidate in double figures. But the survey also finds the Republican field to be far from settled. More than 8 in 10 of those polled said they'd either support or say they're open to considering either Trump or DeSantis. We have to reject the culture of losing that has infected our party in recent years. We have no more time for excuses. DeSantis and Trump have appeared to be on a collision course for months, with the former president launching repeated attacks against the Florida governor. DeSantis is very low and crashing. He's crashing and burning. But DeSantis has been intentional in not directly attacking Trump, instead using his speeches around the country to draw contrast. I don't have time for drama. I don't have time for palace intrigue. I want to make sure uh, that we're executing the agenda. And you know what's happened over the last four years? We don't have leaks. We don't have drama. All we do is get the job done day after day. This year's economic growth is more robust than previously estimated. The Commerce Department says that it's revising the first quarter gross domestic product increase to 1.3%. That's up from the estimated 1.1% it reported last month. The news comes a week before the Treasury Department estimates the U.S. could default if Congress fails to raise the debt ceiling. That could cause catastrophic impacts for the U.S. economy.
As the U.S. grapples with the possibility of its first ever debt default, there's growing concerns about the potential consequences it could have on your personal finances. The Advocate Channel's Jen Sullivan has tips to prepare and protect your money and investments. As the possibility of a U.S. debt default grows, what can you do to limit its potential impact on your finances? The closer we get, the more realistic the possibility becomes that we have a full-blown disaster. Economists say breaching the debt ceiling could be catastrophic, impacting millions of Americans from investors to food stamp recipients. Here are five tips to avoid taking a major hit. One, build an emergency fund. Because there's a chance a debt default could delay government payments for millions, experts generally recommend setting aside at least three months worth of living expenses. Now's the time to harbor your resources, hold back on your discretionary spending, avoid that extra restaurant meal. Two, reduce debt. Pay down high interest credit cards and personal loans. A default could impact interest rates, raising borrowing costs, which leads us to tip three, wait to buy a home. Real estate website Zillow estimates a prolonged default could raise 30-year mortgage rates to a high of 8.4%. So that might mean that you're going to continue renting and just invest a big portion of your money into the stock market. Four, diversify your investments, but don't overdo it. Experts recommend sticking with high-quality investments instead of high-risk volatile ones. And finally, review and adjust financial plans. Use this time to reassess your goals and your budget. It's just an economic cycle, and that doesn't mean, even though it might be a little bit challenging in some ways, it doesn't mean that it will last forever. For Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. The FDA has granted full approval for Paxlovid. The antiviral medication treats mild to moderate COVID-19 in adults at high risk for severe infections. The drug was already on the market under emergency use authorization, but with full approval, doctors now have more leeway in how they can use Paxlovid. For example, they could prescribe a longer course if a person shows signs of a rebound infection. It is the fourth drug and first pill to be approved to treat treat COVID-19. Google has removed a game from its Play Store that lets users simulate owning slaves. The app, developed by Magnus Games, was launched in April. According to the game description, users can either become a wealthy slave owner or achieve the abolition of slavery. Google says it does not allow apps that promote violence or incite hate against individuals or groups based on race or ethnic origin. Within the mobile app, Magnus Games said that the simulator was created for entertainment purposes and the studio condemns slavery in any form. The unofficial start to the summer travel season is about to kick off. Forecasters are predicting near record travel for this Memorial Day weekend. The Advocate Channel has tips and tricks to stay on top of the traffic. From backyards to beaches. The roads are going to be very crowded. AAA is expecting this to be the third busiest Memorial Day weekend since it started crunching holiday travel stats back in 2000, as Americans kick their summer vacations into high gear. We are projecting about 37 million people are going to be going by car for this Memorial Day travel period. A key factor driving people to car travel, lower gas prices compared to last year. Right now we're hovering in the 350, 355 range for gasoline prices for the national average. So that's very advantageous for people who are going to be going by car this year. And if you've gone electric, there are some key benefits to road tripping with your EV. They're quiet, they're fun to drive. You tend to have a lot more space for people and things. Although most electric cars can travel over 200 miles when they are fully charged, there's power in planning. Making sure that whatever app you use, either in your vehicle or on your phone, to tell you where charge points are, um, making sure that that's updated is really important. No matter how your car is powered, you can best maximize your fuel economy by sticking to the speed limit and ensuring your tires are properly inflated. But even with cheaper gas or no gas at all, every road trip comes with headaches. Just know that you will eventually get from point A to B just this year year since everybody has the same idea it may take you a little longer an important reminder to keep your cool as summer travel heats up in washington i'm karen kefa and thank you for joining us for ac 24 7 for more go to the advocatechannel.com and subscribe on the advocate channel youtube page for ac 24 7 i'm aaron dean